Hi, my name is Peter Walker. I'm a counselor and clinical supervisor. I've entitled this uh, brief reflection, Be Yourself for God's Sake. Uh, this is uh, a type of a play on words. Uh, it's not meant to be a, a, an idiomatic expression in that regard. It's meant to play on it and kind of uh, reference the real. Be yourself not for your sake, but be it for God's sake, be it to honor Him. Uh, what I'm touching on is uh, really in many respects a um, maybe a type of a philosophical reflection on the nature of identity and um, what it pivots on in some, some aspects. Uh, being yourself, I think of a, a prince uh, born... Uh, to a king, and if that prince uh, refuses to acknowledge his um, identity, his role as the son of this king, uh, part of a particular lineage that assumes certain responsibilities and privileges, um, has nothing to do with uh, uh, the prince, as it were. Uh, he didn't choose any of these particular uh, characteristics or uh, uh, line of family. He just was born into it. Uh, but nonetheless, it is uh, true or truthful about who he is. Now, if a prince says, well, I, you know, I don't really think I am. I, I don't really deserve to be. Why me? Why not the people uh, outside of our kingdom who maybe would like to be a prince and and they're not and so therefore I'm not um, there there is uh, it just uh, there, there's many facets to that but uh, thinking of uh, uh, who one is for so a prince uh, does he honor or dishonor a king uh, this might even be in a Grimm's fairy tale uh, just trying to picture it. Would he dishonor or honor a king through this um, disposition towards self? Uh, I can't see myself as a prince. I don't deserve to be. I can't find the rationale for it. Um, I definitely can't find the justification for it. It's unfair. Therefore, I won't be it. Well, um, this would uh, probably sadden and in some respects dishonor a king who would look on his son and say, well, you know, um, this is who who you are to us. And, and in this situation, this is what you've been born into. It's a privilege. It's a good thing. Um, and uh, a king would be sad to see a son um, with the, the, these, these gifts for who he is um, miss out on all of what that is. Um, by, by refusing to see and acknowledge and simply maybe humbly, and this might be a key, humbly accepting uh, the, the privilege of being who he is just on the merit of what is true, what is real. Not what he can work out, um, justify, rationalize, just simply looking on and saying it is so and stepping into that role. Um, so just something around the nature of, of being. It, it, uh, it pivots on, well, whence do we derive? Where do we come from? Who made us? Ecclesiastes 12 admonishes the mortal to remember their creator before the earth, speaking to our flesh. The earth returns to the ground it came from, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Uh, there's a sense that we our offspring, an image of God, Genesis 1, 27. And uh, our truest identity is found uh, in humbly uh, understanding uh, where we came from um, and what our calling, what our roles and responsibilities are. Now, uh, bringing this down to the specific, well then, who are we? Uh, there's, there's this macro question of, you know, what is mankind, uh, to whom is mankind, etc. But then there's me, Peter, there's you, there's, there's others. Then there's the specific. 
uh, who am I? Um, if I'm born, uh, let's say, a prince into these parameters of a kingdom, uh, what if I choose not to operate within the parameters of that kingdom? What if I choose to open the gates and go out and do things that might not be um, seen uh, or affirmed to be appropriate or in keeping with who I have been made to be? Can I do whatever I want? Uh, strictly speaking, uh, yes, you can. Will that impact on who I am? In other words, if I choose to do certain things, will it determine and the things I choose to do, will they define who I actually am? Uh, yes and no. And I think this is where uh, things just get deeper and deeper. Um, let's say a prince who is, uh, you know, the son of a king and to represent the family, represent the people, serve the people, but maybe rule the people, lots of roles. Um, if he chooses to open the gates of the kingdom and go out and live in ways that are not in keeping with his roles, his responsibilities, his calling, his, his, his name, will it affect who he is? the actual definition. Will he cease to be the prince, the son of a king? Um, strictly speaking, no. Biologically, no. He will remain a son. Will his choices affect his identity? Um, yes. So if the prince goes out and lives in a way uh, that is not appropriate for the prince to live, perhaps his this will become known amongst his subjects. Perhaps they would lose respect for him. Perhaps the prince, by virtue of this, this ill-gotten knowledge, in other words, by stepping out of the parameters within which he was supposed to operate but was not limited to operating, he, he, he chose to step out, chose to do things. He saw things, he tasted things, he did things that really weren't for him to do, but now they're in his psyche, they're in his heart, they're in his reason, and, and they're complicating an equation of who he is, uh, an equation that would have been and could have been much simpler and in fact much more superior in its innocence had he lacked the knowledge of experiences that were forbidden to him. So in Genesis chapter 3, when it's speaking of... Uh, the forbidden fruit in the garden. It speaks of it, it as being the portal to knowledge, knowledge of good and evil. Um, God said, if you eat of this fruit, if you go here, you will surely die. The serpent said, oh no, you'll become like God. To increase our knowledge and our experiences, to step outside parameters that have been put for us in our life, to increase experiences and things that we're not supposed to, we become less with that increase. Uh, in Ecclesiastes 1, it says uh, 118, with the increase of knowledge is the increase of sorrow. Um, there is something intrinsically connected to the moral fabric of our being and being who we're called to be and then knowing truly who we are and having a settled and a centered and an accurate self-confidence. It's like myelin on nerves. Uh, this moral integrity around who we are and who we're meant to be is integrally connected and, and, and uh, uh, correlated to a sense of self and, and who we truly are. And it can be a long journey home when we have strayed from the kingdom. Okay, choices, do they define us? They can create an Armageddon in our souls that lasts for decades. Uh, they certainly, uh, it, it might define us insofar as we can definitely change a course of life and we can um, confuse the understanding of who we are. That's, that's what it does. Can it take away your birthright? Um, well, fortunately, according to God and Scripture, through his work of redemption, his work of forgiveness, it's as if this king 
lowered himself, went out through the gates to find the prince and then brought him home and, uh, and reinstated him through God's forgiveness, through the efforts he's made, through the doors he remains, uh, uh, he holds open so that the, those of us as prodigals, those of us who have taken our inheritance, ventured away, but then we we repent and we see this is not who I truly am. I, I, I belong at home. And then we go home. The doors are open uh, by God's grace uh, to come back into a place of uh, where we belong, the true you, the true me in Jesus.